Hi everyone, this is Shamin, Chief Digital Marketing Officer at Sky Digital Agency. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about how you can use MailChimp to create newsletters and email marketing campaigns. Without further ado, let's dive into MailChimp. So once you have MailChimp open up, you would realize that this is their homepage with Intuit logo above them. And that's because Intuit actually bought MailChimp about one to two years ago. What you need to do is to click on the pricing tab, which I have opened up right here. So once you click on the uh, how many contacts you have, they will tell you whether you qualify for the free plan. So right now they have actually readjusted that you will be able to use the free plan if you have 500 email contacts. But if you scroll down, what they allow you to do is that they allow you to send 1,000 emails per month, which means that this 500 email subscribers can receive two emails from you in a month. But if you say that, hey, but you know, I only send my email subscribers an email once a month. What happened is if you look below, besides being able to send 1,000 email in a month for free, they give you something called one sit, which means that if you have a big team and only one email can get the admin access to be able to log in. Now, there are pros and cons with this. If you're a very big organization, I would suggest not to be on the free plan because number one, the marketer may not need or the agency may not need the super admin access. If you give the agency the super admin access, that's not an issue, but remember to protect your own customer database, sign some NDAs, sign some agreement to protect you on that area. And it says one audience. What does it mean? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to log into my own MailChimp account and I'm going to show you what audience means. In a free account, they only give you one audience, which means that you only have one sign up form and you can create multiple landing pages and multiple landing pages is really good because it helps you to understand who and what people are interested in. So imagine if I have three different courses, I teach Instagram, I teach MailChimp, I teach LinkedIn. Now I can create three different landing pages to drive traffic to the landing page to tell people about my course. And I want to know who is signing up from where. If I have one audience, but I have three different landing pages, I can still tell because I can ask different questions in my forms and I can tag and identify where these leads are coming from. Are they coming from my LinkedIn landing page? Are they coming from my Instagram landing page? Or my MailChimp landing page, right? Of course, you know, I have many courses, so I can create one for YouTube, one for video marketing, elevator pitch, and so on and so forth. Without further ado, let's dive into MailChimp and I'll talk a little bit about the interface. And if you have any questions, remember to drop them in the comments below. So the good thing about MailChimp is that they actually do ask you for a verification. And this is also one of the reasons why. So if let's say I give you as an agency the access, they will actually ask you whether you want to send an SMS code to verify or you want to send an email, but likelihood that agency will not have the email access. So these are some considerations to have as you uh, consider using MailChimp. For me, I would actually be asking them to send an SMS code. I actually created a new account instead, what happened is once you create an account, they will actually be asking you to activate your account. So this is the email where they actually just sent it to me and I'm going to activate the account right now. And that should allow me to access MailChimp for free. As you actually verify your account, your email with MailChimp, they are actually going to ask you a bunch of questions to set your account up. Most importantly, if you fill up as much information as possible, your account would actually not have as much rate strikes in that sense. So a lot of my participants like to put very generic information or not put their number, not put their address, not put their company name. And when they try sending an email, then that actually kind of block them or something like that. So when they ask you for your information, the account setup, try to put in as many details as you can. This is due to the GDPR policy, but more importantly, I think this also applies to Singapore's contacts on PDPA. So fill in all the information as you can, and you do have to put your number. And in this case, I'm going to put my work number here because it's going to help me moving forward because the other accounts are all linked to my personal number. To follow anti-spam laws, your address will appear at the photo of every email you send in MailChimp. So if you don't have an official business address, you can look for the alternatives. In our case, we do have it. I'm just going to fill in 
Okay, just double check your information. Then the next question they ask you is, what's your top goal with MailChimp? For me, actually, I have a few goals, right? But the most important thing is I want to build landing pages to grow my database. You can choose not to build landing pages to grow your email database, but there are a few concerns here. If you don't use the landing pages to grow your email database. You are importing them manually from, say, for example, your Google Forms. You export it, you upload it. Sure, this comes to the question that my client asks. Can you assure me that these emails that we send via MailChimp will reach our client's inbox rather than spam mail? Actually, there are many benefits of using MailChimp and I'm going to share with you as many benefits of MailChimp as possible. Number one, when you use MailChimp, actually, you are not texting on your own email servers. So today you have 500 emails to send out, you schedule it. It is actually being scheduled and sent out over a period of time. Depending on your email servers, if you have your own company server, your company actually bought a server which is quite expensive, I think 30 over 1000 or you're using AWS, you have your own server, still a few thousand dollars. Basically, there is a limit that they set on the back end, which if I'm not wrong, is either 70 to 100. So even if you use Gmail, the maximum capacity emails that can be sent per hour is 70. So imagine if you have 500, it takes more than five hours to send your email campaigns out. So that's number one reason I always recommend clients to use platforms like MailChimp, Clavio, MailerLite to send your emails out. The second reason is if you actually have a very big database, 500, 5,000, 50,000, the common mistake is to send the email blast out under the CCs. What happened is it has happened to me a lot of times, especially with you know, government agencies, uh, people's association, I've received some emails where everyone's email, 700 emails was copied in the CC rather than BCC and many other instances. And you don't want this to happen to you. People will be offended. People would feel that right now their emails are being exposed. Everyone knows their emails. And it's true. Every time this happens, I start receiving spam mails, whether it's in my work mail or my personal mail. That's the second reason, right? Protecting you as a business, as a marketer, as you blast your email campaigns out. The third reason is it actually helps you be a better marketer because if you build a form, what happens is that people will see this form and they will sign up. But if you build a landing page, it allows you to do so much more. You can actually add a video. You can add three benefits. The view, the visuals of it is a little bit more versatile. But today's focus is really purely how to set up and how to get started with MailChimp. I am going to say that I actually drive sales and revenue because even if it's my workshop and things like that, it's a lot about sales, right? The next question is, what do I want to explore first? So I want to actually start with emails. If you want to do automated email campaigns, this is a little bit more advanced, which means that if people sign up through my landing page, what are the emails I'm going to automate if they sign up through my sign up form. I can say that if I'm at a roadshow today at an exhibition, at a conference, people sign up through my landing page on my forms. I can trigger a automation email series to be sent out once a week to this new subscriber. What I would start with is email. So your contact range for me, I think is slightly above 500. I think we have about six, 700 email subscribers. So this one is whether you want to import your brand. I think there are benefits of importing your brand because your logos and everything is going to be set up quite quickly. This one, I leave it to you. But for me, I'm going to skip this process because I just want to show you how you can get started for free. Now they asked me again, so I'm going to select the free plan. Okay, and I'm done. All right, so those are the few very quick steps. Once you're done, you should see this. We call it a dashboard homepage. If you want to use MailChimp to create emails, all you need to do is just click on create. There are three options here. Landing pages, I talked about it a lot earlier and automation. But what we're going to do is to create a regular email. Click on this and I love their new template or interface you like to call it because it makes it so much simpler for us to use. My recommendation is I usually use their templates because firstly, it is mobile friendly. If today you design an email, you code your own email and someone opens up on mobile, 
on mobile, the screens are so much smaller. So if the email does not respond to mobile, then it is going to be a little bit weird. Definitely, you will not get any click-throughs because people will be like, this email looks funny in my inbox. For me, I prefer to start from scratch. But if you like to look through some of their templates that they have created, you can use those as well. Right now, it is actually stackable again. So that is good news because if you actually use a stackable layout design, you can actually create pretty much anything to columns, three columns, one column, and so on and so forth. So I think this is a great improvement from MailChimp. And if you're wondering whether or not you can learn MailChimp very easily, I think yes. If you roll over, you can see that some of it, it will say apply. Some of it, they will say upgrade to use, but actually it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to show you that I'm going to click on apply and you will see all these content builders at the left. Imagine this with me. This is my logo. So you're supposed to replace your logo here. All you need to do is just select here and you can set your logo. This is the text. So let's say, imagine I will say that, hey, this is Shami. And then I have some text here. After the text, what do I want to do? I want to add an image. I'm going to add an image here. And they're going to ask me, do you want to align it left, right, center? So I'm going to say, okay, center looks good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some text. So I'm going to add another text here. I'm going to type, okay, there's no limit. So of course you don't want it to be too wordy as well. Okay. So that is my email campaign. And if I have an image, so for me, I do have an image. Imagine this is the first email you're sending someone. You might not want to immediately tell them that, hey, you know, I have a LinkedIn workshop coming up. What you want to do is you want to give a brief introduction on LinkedIn, the benefits of LinkedIn, why you encourage them to use LinkedIn, some statistics about LinkedIn, maybe even embed some videos on LinkedIn. I'm going to go over to my YouTube channel. I'm going to grab a video out on LinkedIn, go over to the video tab, we do have five tips to level up. Let me just uh, grab the link here. They are going to ask you a source. So long as you uploaded your video on Vimeo or YouTube, they actually can source it into your email campaigns. So what I'm going to say is that, hey, this is Charmaine. I was wondering your professional. I have five tips to share with you on level up LinkedIn ability. Imagine I'm a content creator. I create YouTube videos. I want to update my email subscribers of my content, my new content, and I want to add value to them before I tell them about my workshop. So let's say I want this text above as well. I could duplicate it. This is a duplicate block. And then I can roll over the block and I can move the block upwards. Very easy, very simple, right? So if you would like a button and you don't want it to be say take survey, you can be sign up or find out more. What I can do is I can go over to my PTX event page to grab the event link. So I'm going over to my PTX event page to grab the event link and then I come back here. Okay, because this is a survey button. So what I need to do is I need to remove the survey button and I need to add my own button, which is called find out more. And you can see that they asked me, what do I want to link to? So I'm going to link it to my PTIX page. This is a survey uh, button. That's why they are asking me to select an audience. But because this is a free plan, the free plan only has one audience. You are just selecting whatever that you have labeled your company name as. If you're done with your email campaign, you can save and exit. Don't worry about all these things below. These are all what we call merge tags. Of course, remember to update your social media links. For me, I'm going to grab my link here, maybe go over to YouTube, maybe website and then YouTube. There you go. Always go to the website and then grab the link. Don't type it out on your own because there tends to be some typo errors and then imagine setting up people click but the website did not work. Okay, so I'm done with my email. Quite simple, quite easy. So that's how you can get started with email marketing. There are many questions to think about and I want to leave you with three questions to think about when you create your email campaigns. Number one is what are different methods you are going to create avenues for you to grow your email database. Number one, through the entire COVID, we use webinars to generate a lot of email database. But how are you going to send related information to the different webinars you have created? Number two, 
how are you going to breach that relationship you have with people who are following you on, say, Instagram or LinkedIn or YouTube? And how are you going to generate, convert them into a, a email database? If you realize a lot of YouTube creators, when they actually create new videos, they actually say that I have a free resource in the link below. Most of the time, when you click on the link, they will ask you for the name and email and they will send that ebook or that resource over to your email. So that's one way to collect email leads or to convert your audience, your followers, your subscribers into an email lead. Number two, I always think about ways I could collaborate with someone who has a database. We do something together and then kind of um, co-broke the database, which means that this event will bring in, say, 20 people, 20 people, or 50, 50, 100, 100, right? People will agree as they sign up for the event that they allow us to get in touch with them. These are some methods for you to think about because if you're always importing your database into MailChimp, that's when there's a high chance that the emails might be delivered but it ends up in their spam. Another reason I always encourage businesses, marketers to send emails through email tools such as MailChimp is they will allow you to do many things and number one is besides using your email, some people like to use their boss's email, it has high open rate, you can actually do a subject and a description after that, you can actually schedule your email. So imagine now it's already 5.37 and it's not a good time for me to send an email. And tomorrow is a public holiday. So what I would prefer to do is I would like to schedule this email for say next week, Monday or Tuesday. And let's say I'm done. This is for my client. I'm going to send a test mail to my client. The only thing about the test mail that doesn't work are some of the functions like merge text. Overall, the client can see, can test the link. If it's good to go, we will schedule it. That's one benefit. Benefit. Number two, when you send the emails out, they give you a report. So usually we look at this report one to two working days later. So imagine you have 500 email subscribers and there's a 20% open rate, which means that 100 people open your email. What I can do as a marketer is I can go in and I can actually segment out to the 80% who did not open your email and I can resend them the email campaign, but I can actually change the email subject. So there are many things and this tool allows you to do it. There are many benefits and if you're wondering what are the other benefits, remember to subscribe to our channel. That is email creation with MailChimp, a simple way, quick way to get started. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If this video has been helpful, remember to give it a like, a thumbs up. Do remember to subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions at all, remember to drop a comment below and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.